You may have noticed in a brief history we've been traveling back in time a lot recently. We're going to keep that going, and today we're looking at a family of serial killers who were active during the 1870s in Labette County, Kansas. The family of four resided in a small cabin that had been transformed into partial living quarters, with the front half of the building being a general store. The perfect location to find and meet passerby to the area, who may not be noticed if they went missing. Thought to be the first family of serial killers, this is a brief history of the Bloody Benders. As always, this episode of A Brief History may contain graphic content and is not suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Today, we're building a general store with living quarters attached in The Sims 4. I did do the entire build in my own interpretation, and it is not really based on their actual house. In 1862, the Homestead Act was signed into law by President Abraham Lincoln. The law, which forcibly removed Native Americans from Western lands in the United States, was employed to encourage settlers to move west by granting 160 acres of land to any American or freed slave. In October of 1870, five families under the Homestead Act moved to Osage Township, where they began to settle. The Benders were one of those five families. John Bender Sr. and his son, John Bender Jr., were the men of the family, and the first to arrive at the location doled out to them by the United States government. It was a 160-acre property with frontage on the Osage Trail, a well-traveled route in the area. John Bender Sr. and his son, John Bender Jr., were the men of the family, and the first to arrive at the location doled out to them by the United States government. It was a 160-acre property with frontage on the Osage Trail, a well-traveled route in the area. It is believed that the Benders were German immigrants, with John Sr. having a strong accent with the little English he did speak. John Bender Jr., on the other hand, was claimed to be around 25 years old and spoke English well, albeit with a slight German accent. John Jr. was an odd duck in the family, and many people in the area believe that he was, quote, a halfwit. The Bender men spent a year alone on the new family homestead to prepare the land for their family. They built a small cabin with a barn and sent for the other two members of their family in 1871. John Sr.'s wife, Elvira, and either his daughter or his daughter-in-law, depending on which stories you believe, Kate, arrived to the new homestead in 1871. Elvira was claimed to be in her 50s at the time, and like John Sr., seemingly spoke little English, and when she did, had a strong German accent. Elvira was claimed by neighbors to be such an unfriendly and unwelcoming person that she earned the title She-Devil by the surrounding homesteaders. Kate, on the other hand, was a young woman in her early 20s who spoke perfect English and was said to be wildly attractive and captivating. Kate also had a penchant for spiritualism, like many of her other family members. But Kate was a self-proclaimed healer and a psychic. She led seances and claimed to heal illnesses. A big draw of visitors to the Bender property was claimed to be Kate, though it is up for debate whether it was her good looks or her communications with the other world that led her to be so popular among the locals and travelers. Upon seeing the popularity of Kate, the Bender family split their cabin in two with a canvas from the covered wagon they used to bring themselves there and created an all-purpose general store and inn at the front of their cabin. The Bender family offered rations, dry goods, and a place to sleep for the night to weary travelers at the front portion of their cabin, while the Bender family themselves lived in the back portion. The Bender Inn was wildly popular and drew the attention of many visitors, until the property became the location for suspicious and concerning events beginning in May of 1871. Travelers along the Osage Trail would frequently stop in with the benders with large amounts of cash to be used in their travels. They would get a meal, plan to stay the night, and never be heard from again. When family members of missing travelers came looking, they managed to follow their trails to southeast Kansas, the location of the benders' homestead, and no further. 
In the spring of 1871, a man was found in a creek just southeast of the Bender homestead. His skull was crushed and his throat had been slashed. The following winter, there were two more bodies found with the same injuries as the man in the creek. And by the time fall rolled around, word had traveled about the missing and deceased people and the Osage Trail lost its popularity, much to the chagrin of the homesteaders along the trail. In the spring of 1873, the disappearances and mysterious deaths would come to a head with the disappearance of a man named George Newton Longcore, along with his 18-month-old daughter, Mary Ann. Longcore's wife had died like many women of the time, and he decided to set out for Iowa to begin a new life for him and his toddler. But George and his daughter would never make it to Iowa. Eventually, Longcore's former neighbor, Dr. William Henry York, was notified that the horses and wagon he had sold to the Longcores to make the trip to Iowa had been found abandoned in Kansas near the Osage Trail. Dr. York set out for Kansas to try and find any information on where George and Mary and Longcore could have gone, taking what he believed to be a brief respite at the Bender Inn on his journey. But Dr. York would never leave the Bender Inn and would never be seen again. Unfortunately for the Benders, Dr. York came from a family who would miss him, unlike many of the other solo travelers on the trail, who had left behind nearly nothing to trek across the country in search of a better life. Dr. York's brothers, Colonel Ed York and Kansas State Senator Alexander York, quickly went out in search of their brother with a 75-man strong search party that had been drummed up at a gathering in Osage Township where the residents had been discussing the strange missing persons cases in the area. The two Bender men were in attendance at this meeting and stayed silent when folks from the area started volunteering to have their property searched to rule them out as suspects. As the search went on for Dr. York, a neighbor noticed the Bender property had been seemingly abandoned. Colonel York led the search party to the Bender Inn and what they found would shock them. The entire cabin had been emptied out of food, clothing, and other personal belongings of the family, and the farm animals had been left to their own devices to starve. There was a strong smell emanating from the floor of the cabin. Eventually, the men found a small trap door on the floor of the cabin, and once it was opened, were overwhelmed with the smell of death. A six-foot-deep crawl space was found underneath the cabin, and was full of clotted blood, but no bodies were recovered from the crawl space. After finding the crawl space, the men began to dig around the property and quickly unearthed the body of Dr. William York, whose throat had been slit and his skull crushed. As the men continued digging around the property, they uncovered nine more bodies, including George Longcore and his young daughter. Soon after, Alexander York, a member of the Kansas State Senate, set out a $1,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of the Benders. As information about the Benders started to travel, there came word from travelers who had visited the Bender Inn, but managed to get away before becoming victims themselves. The travelers claimed that the Benders would seat people with their backs to the canvas separating the front and back half of the cabin. Kate would use her charms and flirt with the male travelers to get them to let their guards down, while the other three benders would hide behind the canvas, waiting to bludgeon the traveler with a hammer. The bender trail was followed but came up cold, though many groups claimed to have found and subsequently killed the bender family in an act of vigilante justice over the years. No bodies of the bender family were ever found and there were sightings of various members in the years after their gruesome killings were discovered. Sightings of Elvira and Kate were frequently claimed, and two women were even arrested as the pair before eventually being released on lack of evidence. It turned out that both John Sr. and John Jr. were not actually related to any of the other Bender family members, with John Jr. actually being a man named John Gebhardt whose half-wit nature was soon believed to be a fake identity to lull people into a false sense of security. John Sr. turned out to be John Flickinger and is claimed to have died by suicide in the mid-1880s. 
though others claim that Elvira and Kate, who actually were a mother-daughter pair, had killed John Sr. instead for stealing the spoils of their murderous activities, like cash and valuables. The eventual fate of the Benders is still unknown to this day, and after unearthing more bodies in the area of their homestead, locals believe that they may have killed upwards of 20 or more people. The Bloody Benders is still an infamous Wild West mystery that captivates people even in this day and age. In 1961, the Bender Museum was created in Cherryvale, Kansas, and included a replica of the Bender Cabin that people could visit and view items that claimed to have belonged to the Benders themselves. The Bender Museum did close in 1978. Though the artifacts from that museum were eventually placed in the Cherryvale Museum and can still be visited today. What do you believe happened to the Benders? How did these unrelated people meet and eventually decide to murder countless others together? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you to my patrons who support this series, you are much appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.